No, on second thought, we've had Mike Bowers for 10 years. I think we'll stick with him. Here he is, Mike Bowers. I'm Mike Bowers. I'm talking 10 years of pitches this morning with cartoonist for the Daily Telegraph, Warren Brown, and Andrew Mears, who's chief photographer for Fairfax. They've been two staples over the 10 years that we've been doing it in both the genres of cartooning and photography. Welcome, gentlemen. Michael, I was going to bake you a cake, but that can be complicated <laughs> television. So here's my Tim Towns for you, only 1.2 cents extra <laughs> under a carbon tax. I'll, uh, I'll forward them on to, to, the, to the chaps down in Melbourne. Warren, John Howard was a, a mainstay of Talking Pictures for almost six years. I oh, know, I miss him so much. I really do miss being able to talk like that. It's sensational from a cartoonist's point of view. He really did have a very recognisable features, a real gift to you guys. His bountiful brows seem to be able to be applied almost in any way. Indeed, and it was Bill Leake who said once the GST came in, his bottom lip grew by 10%, <laughs> which is a lovely line. Yes, well, Bill did a cartoon of, a, uh, of the GST being a great big hairy gorilla being <laughs> legged from a cage, and um, the gorilla had almost exactly the same features of, uh, as John Howard. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderfully cruel cartoon, and that's the great thing about cartooning, and in this country it can be equally unfair to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> One of his utter dependabilities, of course, was his morning walk, which really gave you guys access to him in, in, in an unscripted way, and you would often be out there first thing in the morning doing it. Why did you go and photograph him almost every morning? Well, it was, as you said, you, something might happen. And that's the great fear of being a press photographer. You might miss something. So therefore, you have to turn up. And in one of the great sort of cross-pollinations between, you know, photography and cartooning, his, his tracksuit, that green and gold Australia thing, it became just part of, of him as much as the eyebrows. Relaxed and comfortable. Yeah. That was him, through and through. <laughs> One of the great cross-pollination that he's never going to leave Alexander Dowler alone is, is the story of the stockings and the fishnets, which started from a, a really charitable thing that he was trying to do. And I've got to say, he actually doesn't have a bad foot. If that was my foot, it would look like overbaked bread coming out of there. Well, I must say, he's rather fetching to the knees, you know, from the mm. knees down. From the I knees say. down, yeah. So, knees downer, perhaps, you know? <laughs> and it's stuck. And boy, did it stick to this <laughs> to this day. You'd kind of regret putting on stilettos. <laughs> you think, if I, I didn't do that. <laughs> Put on one fishnet stocking. <laughs> Look, we can't discuss the uh, Howard government without without sort of you know the sidekick. It's like Butch Cassidy without the Sundance Kid. Indeed, Peter Costello. It was quite at home, really, in front of a camera, wasn't he? He kind of played it up a bit. The smirk. I mean, we, every press conference you got that smirk, where you could see some catalyst in his mind about to unleash a tirade. You can't discuss opposition leaders without talking about the giant, the elephant in the room, Mark Latham. He was, he was a gift photographically cartooning stories, the ink that must have been printed about this man. He was the elephant in the china shop. <laughs> well, to think that he came so close to becoming Prime Minister. Andrew, he was, uh, he, he was never too fond of photographers, was he? Yeah, he certainly took to a photographer's cameras with a hammer. Yeah. And of course, when Kevin Rudd came on the scene, the cartoonist of Australia drew his face as perfectly round. I remember Bill Luke told me that he, he, he used to use a 20 cent piece when he was still throwing. <laughs> yes, it was just a sphere. He would do strange things, like this is one of Andrew Taylor's from the 2020. He, he was Wasn't sort of that a great folksy. idea, Mike, the yeah, 2020, 2020 summit? <laughs> 2020. I criticise him for not really having a, a great visual language, couldn't communicate visually, but he was incredibly aware where the cameras were and certainly played up to it. If you went to central casting and you drew a politician uh, for cartooning and photography in many ways, you couldn't do a better job than uh, Tony Abbott when the pugilist, uh, the name itself, his, his boxing uh, and, 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 and his tendency to get into lycra, whether it's budgie smugglers or, or, or cycling gear. Y yes, I mean, that's, that's the amazing thing. And the budgie smugglers have stuck, you know, very much in the same way that the fishnets have stuck for Alexander Downer, but it doesn't seem to put Tony I mean, Abbott off. He's out there peddling around. I mean, ne never before has an opposition leader had as much media focus as this. And obviously the election result's part of that, but the fact is he is the master at the choreographed photo opportunity. And of course, you know, Julie burst onto the scene as the first uh, female Prime Minister and, and really historic picture. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's certainly a vibrancy and I enjoyed the, uh, the feminist colours and the flowers there as a subtle visual reference. Um, but there's an energy and that's what we are trying to do. You're trying to capture emotion and share that. On days like that, you can't but help soak it up. There seems to be two features that uh, people um, concentrate on with uh, Julia Warren, uh, cartooning-wise. It's the nose and the hair. Well, no, no, well, there's three, the nose and the hair and the derriere. Yeah, well, the derriere so, is something that um, it's come up lately. That um, Is it fair to draw her derriere? Things were happening so quickly. Uh, poor Julia Gillard didn't get the opportunity for a honeymoon period. Um, and so cartoonists were scrambling like RAF pilots and the sirens going off and just drawing flat out. As I said before, you need to be equally unfair to everyone. Yeah. 
Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure trying to sum up the last 10 years. Thank you very much for taking the time this morning. Well, thank you, Mike. Hey, I've got something for us. Ready? Yep, we're to play us out. And the key of this. Happy birthday to us. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to us. Happy birthday, insiders. Happy birthday to us. And Barry too. I think it's definitely back to you, Barry. Wait for your 21st. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go further down memory lane in just a moment, so final observation in the meantime. <laughs> You'll have to be quick, because far is bristling with pie charts over there. <laughs> I just wanted to insert a historical perspective. 2001, uh, the rate of boat arrivals in this country was 43 boats and 5,516 people. The next year, 2002, one boat, one person. Mm. So far this year, 28 boats, 1,620 people. In all the discussion on the carbon tax, it's important not to overlook the terrible uh, murders in Mumbai this week. Uh, India is a great friend of Australia, an important ally, a very important democracy, and uh, we wish all the Indians well. I think on the occasion of Insider's 10th birthday, it's important to raise a coffee cup to the viewers. I think in this kind of period of divisive and difficult debate, the fact that there are still so many people prepared to engage in the debate, watch programs like this is a terrific thing. And to the panel too for being so disciplined and agreeable for so long. <laughs> this is going to sound so trite. Look, Hawker, <laughs> Hawker Britain has done an analysis of how the, the independents have voted so far in this parliament. An interesting side bit of it is that Andrew Wilkie has not missed one division of this parliament. Uh, Bob Cat has missed about half of them. I don't know what that means, but I thought it was interesting. <laughs> and we'll leave you now with, uh, with a little more nostalgia, some memories of the, the programs from when we first went to air on the 15th of July 2001. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching for a decade now. Bye. One minute, 30 seconds, 15. Three, two, one. Please don't stop the music. Good morning and welcome to Insiders, the morning after a crucial by-election in Melbourne. I believe that the government is well and truly back in the game. Observation or a prediction, one at a time. One of the most convincing acts of lunacy I've seen in some time. People Possibly. mutually backstab each other to death. They're all being terribly noble and saying they don't believe they will be. Tearing up the old idea of, of uh, the brown rice and lentils party. Could mean that actually <laughs> well, sense has prevailed over, over party politics. Hoe into that swordfish and tell me what you think of it, Sonny. <laughs> Am I able to answer? Or don't oh, you you will, well, who could stop you? It all depends on the phases of the moon. Hugh Zackerman, don't be shy about this issue. <laughs> and I'm chief photographer for the Fairfax Group of Newspapers. I'm in Sydney with the Daily Telegraph's cartoonist, Warren Brown. You saw John Howard and he was like a rabbit in the spotlight. And there were times there when John Howard had, you know, when his eyebrows do this, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, in yeah. a cartooning way. Yeah, you know, when all his yeah. eyebrows do this, when his eyebrows do this, he goes... He wants a dignified changeover. For that to occur, he can't keep you waiting forever. Well, I, uh, I'm quite happy to be the treasurer. Uh, I've been the treasurer now for uh, five and a half years. Well, if he's not years discussing it with life. Peter Costello, he'd hardly discuss it with you, would he? Oh, you yes. never know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. Did you Why actually... are they asking us not to panic? Didn't you see the later edition of this? The Peter Costello edition was... <laughs> panic. <laughs> would you run to the speaker if Roman Bishop blew you a kiss across the chamber? <laughs> I think I would die. <laughs> the people you've really got to watch out for in this game are those who try to make a fetish of their innocence. Those poor kids at that playground going, Mummy, Mummy, who's that strange man <laughs> talking about fetishes? Is there a bit of Stockholm Syndrome? Do you begin to sort of feel like you're a captive and you start to like them? All I can tell you is, you know, who do you better trust to uh, keep the economy strong? <laughs> who do you better trust to keep interest rates low? How about the weapons of mass destruction? Are they under you? Or... <laughs> For me, it'll be health, education, the age and the environment. And I think Bob Brown's my man. Okay, cheers. cheers. It's amazing who you go home with after a couple of glasses of bubbly, isn't it? I think it's been a good year, um, except for the election. I want insiders <laughs> team ponchos for next year, Barry. I don't think the ABC budget will run for that. And that's all they're getting, a small step in the right direction. Well, cut it out. We've just made uh, made a change. I mean, fair crack of the whip. We fired up the Barbie to have a look at some of the hot issues that happened this year, 2005. Oh, the script's gone. What are we going to do? <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. Insiders, political personality of the year, 2005, Senator in Barnaby Joyce. You must be very excited. It looks awfully like a poison chalice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Prime Minister will invite me around for a, a cup of tea and a, and a good flogging. What I'm saying is this. You, you cannot call a relationship between a man and a man and a woman and a woman, or a man and a dog or his cat or his goat, 
a oh, marriage. Oh, Piers. A Piers. marriage. And this is why... Piers, that's disgusting. Yeah. No, no. Piers, are you seriously David. calling... That is simply disgusting. Of a man and a not. goat. Whatever the sometimes manic activity in the Parliament, this was the political image that carried the week. It's great more. We're talking pictures with Bill Leake, the cartoonist for The Australian. Now he won't get out of bed for anything it. less than $10,000. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in that light? Australia's most disgraced senator, mate. <laughs> I did enjoy the Middle Eastern kiss of you. Liam, you've seen off Turnbull there. You can now have the reshuffle. I think if you'd done it a couple of weeks ago, he might have got the votes on you. <laughs> Mm. Les Patterson saying, give this man the gold bloody walkley. <laughs> you have public apologised, but, but I still have to ask the question, what were you thinking? I want to know what uh, Glenn's migraine medication was, and I won't be taking it, but also... This constant talk of Kevin Rudd's popularity is starting to annoy senior ministers. I was enormously popular. I only hope that Mr Rudd suffers the same fate that I did, mm. instead of flouncing around like a celebrity. Feeling all apex? Oh, indeed, Mike, and I have to say, as the uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Australian Political and Editorial Cartoonist Cooperative, otherwise known as a peck kick. Uh, it's been a wonderful week. It has to be said of that program that it is a very dedicated, serious federal political program. Kevin Rudd had too much to drink and uh, went to a strip club in, in New York. I guess my question to you, Glenn Milne, is uh, is the newspaper editor in trouble? At the outset, let me say I've never been to a strip club. I did go to a tattoo parlour one night, you know, <laughs> after being on the tiles, but I didn't go through with it. <laughs> Barry, I'm here to answer your questions. So there's okay. two ways this interview can go. You can act like a jilted lover and we can do that for several minutes or you can ask me whatever political questions you've got. I accept full responsibility for the coalition's defeat. Ah oh, look, what's the point of going back over the last 12 months? We can't revive that. It's all over. Is the country ready for a Prime Minister called Kevin? Kevin would have done the market research and if his name was no good he would have changed it to Margaret. Do you think at some point you might have to take him aside and remind him of who's the boss? Well look, Barry... We are so blessed to have someone like Malcolm Turnbull in our ranks. They don't know whether they're Arthur or Martha. Barry, that is absolute tr tripe. We've never seen anything like this. Time now for the Matt Price moment. And uh, when we lost our great mate and couch colleague uh, just over two years ago, we decided to dedicate a political moment to him every year. And that had to be the moment that would have inspired the best of Matt's columns. I think I have reasonably good people skills. Every mother loves her baby. Every baby is valued. And Mr Rudd should value all babies equally. Good morning. Welcome to another year of Insiders. This week, Federal Parliament will meet in Canberra for the first time in 33 years without John Howard. I was pointing out to Kevin Rudd that he'd in fact stolen Mark Latham's idea. And then suddenly, as he was sitting there looking plaintively at me with his funny little um, over haircut the glasses, yeah. over the top of his glasses, and I said, you're a naughty boy. It just, and I sent him to the naughty corner. And 